Liberation Front has taken credit for what it calls the liberation of a thousand captive mink from a farm in Massillon, Ohio. Jerry Vlasic is a press officer for the North American Animal Liberation Press Office. We asked him if this latest action had set a record for freeing caged animals in the U.S. No, that's not actually a record. Uh, the, uh, the farm in um, Ohio, which was uh, also uh, liberated, uh, had 5,000 mink uh, liberated from it about 1999, I believe. So this is not the largest mink liberation, but it's, uh, these two liberations are of note, the uh, only ones since uh, in the last three years in the United States. So they represent somewhat of a resurgence possibly in the uh, animal ap activism movement uh, in regards to uh, liberating captive mink. Were so many minks able to be freed because of the way they're caged, in other words, are there any other animals that are caged in such large numbers at these farms? Well, other animals have certainly been released, uh, but the, as far as numbers go, mink are the largest uh, numbers uh, kept under intensively confined conditions. And so it's rare to find, for instance, a, a fox, fox farmer or a coyote farmer who has you know, more than uh, maybe a hundred or a couple hundred animals under, um, under confinement. So, Mink uh, are in larger areas of confinement. They've also been shown scientifically to be able to survive in the wild. Uh, they're, they're genetically wild animals, even though they have been held in captivity for maybe several generations. There have been scientific studies done where the mink have been tagged, and, and it's been proven that they can survive in the wild. So there's a good chance that a large number, perhaps not all, but a large number of the mink that were liberated uh, recently will uh, go on and survive. They, they tend to spread out relatively quickly over large areas of uh, land, and it, it's not, uh, it's, it wouldn't be unheard of for a significant number of these guys to survive in the wild. And once these animals are released, does that have a negative effect on the ecological balance in the area where they're released, or is the ecological balance maintained? Uh, it's hard to say for sure. Uh, certainly there will be some disruption in the local ecosystem, uh, certainly while the animals disperse and, and set up their, uh, their lives there. But basically the areas are, are fairly conducive to uh, mink living their lives. They, live, they tend to live in solitary uh, uh, groups, uh, not groups, but they tend to live in solitary uh, formation. And I, I think it's, it's entirely likely, as, as opposed to what the, uh, the farmers will tell you is that, well, you know, they, they, these animals release, they're all going to die of free, of, by freezing to death within you know, the next hour, or they're all going to be run over by cars, uh, that sort of thing. These areas are always in very remote rural areas. Is, chances of them getting hit by a car are, are pretty remote. They're definitely not going to freeze to death. Uh, again, they're wild animals. They, they know how to survive in the wild. So most of these animals will at least have a shot at freedom. They were all 100% going to be murdered sometime in the next few weeks by the fur farmer uh, in order for him to sell their, their skins uh, into the fashion industry. So any chance they get is certainly better than no chance, which is what they had if they had not been liberated. That's Jerry Vlasic of the North American Animal Liberation Press Office.